if you will join me before we get started in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right now, we're going to bring up Ashley Wineland, whose album is being released today. She starts her U.S. tour coming up this next week, I believe, this year. It's all yours, Ashley. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rain parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Today is the day to do this. This started in Connecticut about 35 years ago, and it kind of went by the wayside, and I'm trying to bring it back, so I appreciate the time. Thank you, Riders USA, for giving me this opportunity. The Fallen Warrior Ceremony. Throughout the history of the world, there has been a military tradition of erecting a makeshift battlefield memorial for our fallen warriors. Whenever possible, the comrades of that fallen warrior would drive his sword or lance or rifle vertically into the ground and upon the hilt they would place his helmet. It started in World War I to mark where the bodies had fallen and they wouldn't miss it when they did the dust off. Against this totem of honor, they would place that warrior's shield, which identified the warrior for his family name and origin. And in front of this display, they would place his empty sandals or boots. There is no accurate account of how this tradition began but it has survived up to this day in one form or another and is presently revered tradition in the United States military. However, during the past hundred years, until recent times, this tradition has itself become a casualty of industrial efficiency. <clears throat> and during the 20-year conflict in Vietnam, the custom was all but forgotten. Our fallen comrades were unceremoniously processed and shipped home before we ever had a chance to mourn or honor their passing. His weapons, gear would be re-inventoried and his personal belongings were packed up and shipped home. Little time was spent dwelling on their loss and whatever attention given was often riddled with irrelevant battlefield humor which now weighs heavily upon the minds and hearts of those who survived. Today, with the wisdom and repentance that comes with age and experience, we may now properly memorialize our brothers and sisters for the sacrifice they have made during those times. And in their honor, we will presently conduct the Fallen Warrior Ceremony 
first by placing a rifle of that period with bayonet fixed vertically into a platform which symbolizes the ground on which our comrades fell. A veteran of the United States Army will place the M16 rifle muzzle down, unloaded, silent and empty. The Vietnam combat helmet with its camouflage cover and band was an icon of those days in Vietnam. Upon it each soldier wrote or drew something that embodied his nature or sense of humor. In the band one would often see a small bottle of insect repellent or other objects that they wished to keep dry. Although it began in its existence as merely a part of one's uniform, it eventually took on the personality of its owner, and the shape of its silhouette was to us an icon of America's ideal defender. Today, a Vietnam veteran of the United States Navy will place a helmet on, of that period on the buttstock of the M16 rifle. The boots of the warrior were made to carry him to his duty and sometimes to his final destiny. They were not at all comfortable, nor was the duty he was asked to fulfill. But he filled them nonetheless, and wore them with the sincere hope that they might also carry him back home one day. Today, a Vietnam veteran of the United States Marine Corps will place those jungle boots on the platform in front of the M16 rifle. The use of individual identification identification tags goes as far back as the Spartans of Greece about 2,500 years ago and for many centuries a warrior's shield also served as a form of individual identification. The need for individual identification was documented during the American Civil War by the soldiers themselves by imposing their own identification pinning slips of paper with name and home address to the backs of their coats stenciling identification on their knapsack or scratching it in the soft lead backing of their military belt buckle. The first, the first official issuing of identification tags took place in 1899 and by 1913 Army regulations made them mandatory. By 1917 all combat soldiers wore a set of aluminum discs on chains around their necks. The nickname Dog Tags was adopted during World War II, describing the two oblong tags that each soldier, sailor, and airman wears up to the present time, and it has come to represent the personal identity of each and every one of us. A Vietnam veteran of the United States Air Force will place a set of dog tags on the handle of the M16 rifle to represent each soldier that we honor here today. The American flag. For many years our country's colors have represented a nation dedicated to liberty and freedom. That represent, that flag is each and every one of us. That flag has been carried to many lands and have inspired acts of valor which often demand the ultimate sacrifice. 
those who have come before us in previous wars have paid for our right to carry on in their stead, for wars that are not won nor freedom ensured by the living alone. Today I've asked a civilian, a member of our community, representing the Gold Star families, to place an American flag against the boots. A single yellow rose is a symbol of hope that all will return. When a country hosts a war, it's always, always, always the children who suffer the most. Today a child is placing a yellow rose with a prayer that the children of war will rise from the ashes of war to find love. A single red rose is often used as a reminder of the families and what loved ones who keep the faith awaiting the return of those who are or were prisoners of war or missing in action, still hoping and waiting for their return. An American patriot, a member of our country, will place a red rose at the, in those boots. We offer this memorial today in the honor of those who have given their lives in the defense of our nation and our freedom and with special regard to those who are presently serving. We are all our freedom, our liberty, worth dying for. We are that important. I ask God to bless us all, to thank him for his amazing, amazing grace that he has shined upon all of us, and to thank you all for being here today. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.